Throughout human history, you can't get further underground than hell. Here's David Mattingly. Welcome to the altar of Marilyn Manson, the most controversial rock and roll act on the road today, coming soon to a sold out arena near you. I've always identified with the character of Lucifer in the Bible. Taking the names of two American icons, Marilyn Manson creates a performance that is a paradox of glitz and horror. The ghoulish makeup might remind you of bands of the past, but if you think they were outrageous, then get ready for the new king of shock rock. As the, the Beatles were bigger than Jesus, Marilyn Manson is bigger than Satan. We followed Manson and his band here to Wheeling, West Virginia, a town consumed with outrage over the band's arrival and filled with fantastic rumors. We came looking for the truth behind the band's threatening reputation, and we found it buried beneath a layer of free speech and free enterprise known as hype. No noise of any kind. No surf objects. It's hours before the Marilyn Manson concert, and already fans in Wheeling are lined up outside the Civic Center. It's a sold-out show. Some have been standing in the freezing temperatures since early afternoon. Rising out of the South Florida club scene, Manson comes to town riding a whirlwind of national publicity. Rolling Stone readers named Manson Best New Artist. But not everyone in Wheeling is looking forward to tonight's performance. We must continue to pray. Presbyterian Minister George Kurt and others in the Christian community are outraged over Manson's reported involvement in the Church of Satan. Marilyn Manson, uh, he's evil. The Church of Satan worships neither God nor the devil and teaches people to believe only in themselves. It's a theme common in Manson's music. The idea, you know, uh, God is dead, you are your own God. Uh, it's a lot about um, self-preservation. A lot of people confuse it with devil worship and things like that. This is not a game and it's not for fun and I don't think it's even for show and uh, we've already seen the effects that it can have on young people. We're here to worship Satan. <laughs> Satan's God! Extra security's been brought in to handle the wheeling crowd. While ticket holders go through the customary searches, Manson is relaxing in his eccentrically decorated dressing room. And we find he is just a little amused by all the negative reaction. The most ironic thing that these people always fail to realize is that the lack of hospitality that they greet someone like me with is just very unchristian. I think that's the biggest paradox of all. You see some of the concert goers standing behind me. In every city, Manson's arrival now stirs a flurry of protests and angry headlines. Here in Wheeling, we watched as Reverend Kurtz organized an 11th hour candlelight vigil. They're holding candles to save my soul. <laughs> Ironically, it was the Rolling Stone article that alerted the protesters to Manson's beliefs. The same article that also revealed Manson's roots as the boy named Brian Warner, growing up in Ohio, coming from a middle-class family and a Christian school. As a kid, I remember all the bands that I ended up listening to, David Bowie and Black Sabbath and Kiss and things like that. I had heard about all of them through my church because I was told this is what I wasn't supposed to listen to, so I went out and bought it immediately. The forbidden fruit Brian Warner savored as a boy, Marilyn Manson now dishes out to a hungry new generation of fans. <laughs> 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 
And it doesn't take long to see what makes Manson so shocking. He takes shots at Christians by portraying evangelists as fascists and tossing a torn up Bible into the crowd. You know, in the past, people have always, you know, hid their horns, so to speak, because uh, they've always backed down when people confront them about the darker side of, you know, man's nature. But I, I don't think it's something we should be afraid of or ashamed of. I think one of the things you have now is you have this generation where, you know, the parents grew up on rock and roll, so the parents, you know, grew up during the 60s or whatever, and so it's like, you know, so it's got to be pushed a little bit further because, you know, their parents aren't, aren't going to be, uh, you know, as easily outraged as maybe my parents were, you know. Jim Henke is the former music editor of Rolling Stone and now chief curator of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum in Cleveland. He showed us items like the guillotine and severed head that Alice Cooper used to shock audiences of the 70s. And he tells us that being offensive is part of a tested rock and roll formula for success. It's the big part of the idea is that they want to do something that's going to outrage the parents, and, you know, and who can be more outrageous. So that's, uh, you know, that's always been an element of rock and roll. And for certain people, whether it's Alice Cooper or Ozzy Osbourne or Marilyn Manson, it's a, you know, a big part of what their entire goal is, I think. <laughs> If shocking parents is the goal, then Manson does not disappoint. His music is laden with images of hopelessness and despair. At one time, Manson even breaks a wine bottle across his chest. Everyone sees me as this bad person because of what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is in everyone. It's, it's the part of you that no longer uh, has hope in, in mankind and, and you realize that you know you are the only thing you can believe in that's really the bottom line we don't want to believe in a god that doesn't believe in us they always say that you remember a civilization by its architecture and its music that's scary <laughs> Barbara Wyatt of the Parents Music Resource Center helped lobby for warning labels on records with explicit lyrics. Well, I think certainly the satanic themes are in here. Now, she says she takes at least 20 calls a week from parents complaining that Manson's music goes too far. Where is the harm? Well, again, it's what goes into the brain can stay into the brain. I don't think there's any evidence here that these, you know, kids are uh, going to go out and, uh, you know, rape and loot and uh, you know storm our uh, neighborhoods they're just having a good time i think that's pretty much what it comes down to yeah so it's only rock and roll and that's the only rock and roll and they like it so. <laughs> if this is true that it's only rock and roll then everyone who reacts to the shock of manson's music becomes part of the show the rebellious youth who pay to see him <laughs> and the indignant parents who want him to leave my prayer is that there'll come a day when there are no cities left for him to perform in. Unfortunately for them, usually with all of their complaining and protesting, they end up just selling more tickets. And this may be what his detractors find most shocking of all. The sales of Marilyn Manson's latest album recently went triple platinum, exceeding three million copies worldwide. I think. People are just afraid of things they don't understand, and uh, maybe they're not meant to understand me, but uh, obviously some people do, and that, that's important to me.